There's a truck backing up over there, right in my filming spot. I'm filming! I will wait. <laughs> Let's do this. The audacity of the sun to just switch up on me while I'm filming. It's almost like the world doesn't revolve around me, which is ridiculous. <laughs> Hello shoddy bays, hello besties. It is officially the last day of the month. We are in the month of, I wanna say March. Therefore, we're gonna talk about all the books I read this month. You know the drill already. It's a little tradition, some would say. You know, some being me, because nobody else says that besides me. I think I read about 20 books this month, give or take. That may be wrong, we'll see. So let's talk about it. So I started out the month strong with The Kingmaker series by Sophie Lark. Because as you guys know, last month, I read all of the Brutal Birthright series. And that is the parents' books to this series. Yeah. Anyway, the parents have a series and that is the Brutal Birthright series. If you want to know more, just watch last month's wrap up. I talk about it on there. But this is their kids. And basically Kingmakers is like a Hogwarts for mafia kids. So picture just like a boarding school where all the criminal kids go and learn how to be more criminal. It's the heir, then the rebel, then the bully, then the spy, then the savage. All of these are dual POV, by the way. So we start off with the heir, and this is Leo and Anna. This is a childhood friends to lovers. Leo and Anna have been family friends since they were kids. They are very close, and they both go to Kingmakers together. They are freshmen, and you get to basically see the world build in the air. An amazing start to the series. I loved Leo and Anna so, so much. I love friends to lovers. I loved seeing the dynamic of Kingmakers and getting to know the school, and I rated this one. 4.5 stars. Then you go into The Rebel and that is Miles and Zoe. In this one you have a little bit of Forbidden because Zoe is set to marry someone else and obviously Miles he cannot have that. So there's a forbidden aspect to them. I also rated this one 4.5 stars. Then you go into The Bully and this one is Dean and Cat. This one is more so um <laughs> More so like dominant submissive energy. You meet Kat in the rebel and you see her keep this secret that no one can know. And Dean finds out about said secret. So he basically says that she has to do everything he wants if he's going to keep this secret. I loved this one. Dean Yenin. It was a 4.75 for me. Lastly, you get to The Spy, and this was originally the last book in the series before Sophie wrote The Savage. I will tell you nothing about this because this is kind of a secret throughout the series. It's a little bit of a twist, a little bit of um a mystery that you find out when you get to the spy so i will not tell you anything i rated it 4.25 and lastly the savage this one is the new one i was not expecting what this one brought to the table okay this one is sabrina and adric and let me just say it lives up to its name it is definitely the savage i rated it four stars so overall i loved the kingmaker series i loved reading about the parents and then getting to read about the kids you can still read every single one of these as a standalone because it recaps everything that happened in the other books without spoiling too much so you can read them in any order you want. It's just that, you know, for you to pick up all the cameos, for you to understand all the couples, the reading order is what's best. These are my top favorites right here, right here, right here. There you go. So I started off the month with Kingmakers. I would definitely say it's very worth the read. If you like mafia, if you like like boarding school energy, a lot of different tropes, a very spicy series, that's definitely for you. It's not one of those fluffy ones. Don't expect that from these like dark romances because like Brutal Birthrights and Kingmakers, they are great series if you're just getting into mafia and they're great series if you want romance, but with spice. You know what I mean? Like there's not fluff romance you don't see a lot of cute romantic scenes you see a lot of like action and you see a lot of spice different type of romance it's definitely dark you know so for sure search up trigger warnings for those as well if you're going to read them so then i read mr wrong number by lynn painter <laughs> In this one, you have Olivia and you have Colin. It is dual POV. And Olivia is basically down on her luck. Nothing is going right for my girl. Um, she is struggling a little bit, much like us all. She's not doing very well with adulthood. <laughs> we can relate. Anyway, so she burns down her apartment. <laughs> Like I said, things are really not going well. She has nowhere to live. She just broke up with her boyfriend. So she goes to live with her brother for the time being while she gets a job, while she gets her shit together. And her brother has this roommate. Of course, you see where this is going, right? Brother's best friend. Her brother has this roommate, Colin, who he has been friends with for a very long time. And Olivia and him do not get along, have not gotten along for years. She has to live there. And one night while her brother and the roommate are both out, she receives this text. And in the text, it says, what are you wearing? <laughs> We're throwing up. It's disgusting, right? She replies and she plays around with him for a little bit. They have a little banter back and forth, but then they continue to text. And she doesn't know who this Mr. Wrong number is, but we do because it's Colin. You get dual POV. You 
you get romance, you get comedy, you get brother's best friend, you get enemies to lovers, you get a little bit of spice. This book was very, very cute. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite book of all time. Like, I'm not dying over it, but I liked it. You know what I mean? Like, it was a fun read. It's just not one of those that I felt very connected to the characters. Like, I wasn't in love with Colin and um, I, I was about to call her Becca. That just goes to show I wasn't in love with her. I forgot the girl's name. <laughs> what was her name? It's Becca. No, it's not. It's Olivia. Oh my. That is not Becca. I know shit, honey! Do I need more coffee? I think so. Anyway, I wasn't obsessed with Colin and Olivia together or separately, to be honest. There were parts in this book that I was a little bit bored, which is why I rated it a four star. It definitely wasn't a five for me, but I did enjoy it. It was one of those that was just a fun, fluffy read. And I love me a good rom-com, you know what I mean? So if you're into fluffy rom-coms, you would probably like this too. Next, I went for something completely different than the rom-com, and I went for The Birthday List by Devney Perry. As you guys know, I started reading Devney Perry recently, and I have fallen in love with her writing. It's so mature, it's so refreshing refreshing she doesn't usually do that 80 percent breakup we all hate the relationships are very grown i don't know everything about it just hits it's all small town too which i've been into small town you know picture stars hollow so the birthday list is book one in the mason jar series there is the second book called letters to molly that i will probably be reading next month i just kind of needed a break because this one was very emotional for me i loved this book but like i said emotional the birthday list follows cole and poppy in his dual pov and poppy's husband passes away tragically and five years later she decides that she wants to complete his bucket list so a certain person from her past cole volunteers to help her with the list so this book is definitely very bittersweet because you get such amazing cute scenes but then also you feel so bad it's so emotional it's so so beautiful and i loved that in every chapter you get to see something from the bucket list the quotes were amazing i even tabbed it because i really really liked the quotes how did you get through it minute by minute that day i decided to take life minute by minute some minutes were better than others but it was the only way i'd be able to live life minute by minute this was everything i rated it a 4.75 didn't feel like a five star to me but i really really loved it it just wasn't a five it didn't give me that feeling but it was a 4.75 so it was pretty damn close you know and molly and finn which are the characters in letters to molly which is the second book in the series like i said you meet them in this book so i would probably recommend to go in order they are standalones though if you want to just read the birthday list you can and if you want to just read letters to molly you can do that as well next up we have the heart principle by helen huang it is the third and last book in the kiss quotient series as you guys know last month i read the kiss quotient and i read the bride test and then this month i read the heart principle and it did not disappoint okay the kiss quotient and the bride test were both five stars for me and so was the heart principle of course this book was definitely the more emotional one in the whole series i felt like it dealt with way deeper topics than the other two so for sure search up trigger warnings basically you have kwan and you have anna it is dual pov and this one is in first person the other two are in third person but this one is first and they are all standalone so if you want to just read the heart principle you can if you want to just read the kiss quotient or the bride test you can but i would definitely recommend reading all of them because they were all five stars for me i love this series so fucking much the kiss quotient trilogy is the perfect mix of romance comedy spice representation diversity family friendship it has a little bit of everything honestly and i was pleasantly surprised by it because it took me so long to read the kiss quotient and when i finally did i just read the entire series because i was obsessed this book follows kwan and it follows anna and anna is a violinist who had a viral youtube video and she's currently dealing with burnout from that because she cannot recreate that moment again and you meet kwan in the kiss quotient and the bride test and you see him basically be this kind of player um but in the heart principle everything changes when he meets anna anna um not only is dealing with burnout but she also was just kind of broken up with her long-term boyfriend tells her that he wants to see other people before they settle down so that he can make sure that she is what he wants i know we hate to see it right but then anna decides okay if you're gonna go do that and you're gonna go sleep with other people so am i i'm gonna have my first one night stand enter Quan, and clearly the one night stand turns into not so much of a one night stand and in the middle of all of this anna's also dealing with a tragedy that happens in her family and Quan is also dealing with his own stuff too so you get a self journey as well as a couple journey in the heart principle the entire kiss quotient series is amazing all three books like i said have representation they have vietnamese representation they also have um autism representation as well they were so well written the characters are so lovable every single couple is amazing every single character is amazing i loved the heart principle it was a five star for me for sure so your trigger warnings if you're gonna read it like i said it is not one of those like very cutesy reads um it is very cute of course but it does deal with some heavy topics however the bride test remains my favorite book in that series i said what i said i know the kiss quotient is the most popular and right after that it would be the heart principle but the bride test is my underrated king you can quote me on that or as my mom says you can write that down <laughs> 
<laughs> my mom, instead of saying like, don't quote me on that, she'll be like, don't write that down. <laughs> Sorry for exposing you, Eureka. Love you so much. Her name's not Eureka. Her name's Erica. But I call her Eureka because of that one scene from the OC where Seth goes to Ryan and he's like, Eureka, Ryan, Eureka. <laughs> Nobody's laughing. Nobody cares. The sun is going down. That's cute. Sorry if the lighting's changing, y'all. The sun is just doing crazy things. It's just living up there and then going that way and then, you know, doing doing what the sun does best. Shine. <laughs> so since I was on a roll with very, like, cute reads, I was like, oh my god, let's switch it up. Lessons in Sin. This is a very taboo dark romance. Please search up trigger warnings if you're going to read this one. And please make sure dark romance is for you because I know that it is not everybody's cup of tea. And that is perfectly fine if you do not want to read taboo, if you do not want to read dark romance, that is your right. Just know that this one is very dark and very taboo because, um, <laughs> okay. Lessons in Sin follows Tinsley and Magnus. And Tinsley is basically this rich girly who makes some mistakes according to her parents and they send her to a cat Catholic boarding school. Enter Magnus. He is her priest teacher. <laughs> She's also 18 and he's also 40. So you do have a 22 year age gap in this book. It's definitely not for everyone. You have teacher student, you have age gap, you have forbidden, you have dual POV. This was definitely a slow burn, but when you get to the spice, it's very spicy. You know what I mean? But you have to get there. It is a while until you get to those parts. I loved that aspect of it. I loved seeing the struggle of like them dealing with that attraction they had for each other because forbidden romances I feel like do best when they are slow burns. You want the tension and you want the banter and you want them fighting the attraction they have for each other, you know? And you get that in this book. I rated it a four star. I really, really liked it, but there were some scenes that just were not for me. They are some people's cup of tea. They were not mine personally because it does deal with like the humiliation trope, which I saw some people ask once what the humiliation trope is. So let me explain. Is basically like the opposite of praise. So like praise king could be like good girl girl um you're doing so good <laughs> like that kind of vibe humiliation trope is basically like one significant other humiliating the other whether it's like oh you're such a little slut like that kind of vibe but it can go further than that like also making them do things that are humiliating and that's what happens in this book it also happens in the bully by sophie lark as well so that's what i mean when i say that and two scenes in this book are definitely very very heavy on the humiliation which is not my favorite um i'm more of a praise trope kind of gal you know, but it's some people's favorite thing. I am never one to kink shame. So if you want some of that, that is in Lessons in Sin. I really did enjoy it. I loved Magnus and Tinsley. Even though you see the power dynamic in Teacher Student, she was also very, very powerful, which I loved to see. And she challenged him just as much as he challenged her, which was great. So yeah, if you are in the mood for a spicy, forbidden, taboo romance, Lessons in Sin. It was four stars for me. Then I read Credence by Penelope Douglas. Um, basically, you have this girl, Tiernan, um, and her parents pass away, and now she has to live with the only family she has left, which happens to be her step uncle. And she goes to live with him in the mountains in the middle of Colorado. He is her now guardian since her parents passed away, and he has two sons, so they are Tiernan's step cousins. Um, and basically, Credence is a romance about Tiernan with her step uncle Jake and her step cousins Noah and Kayla. What the fuck did I read when I read this? It felt like a fever dream. I still can't even fathom the things I read in this book. I still can't even wrap my mind around what it was. I rated it a 3.5 or 3.75 for getting a little crazy. I don't even recommend it, honestly. Don't get me wrong, some people do enjoy this book. I just personally didn't, but I did have a fun time reading it because it was like, what the fuck? It was fun for me to make fun of it but it wasn't like a book that I enjoyed because of the content in the book. You get me? But the spicy scenes were superior. <laughs> For sure, search of trigger warnings if you're going to read this. There were some very questionable scenes that I hated where like consent was questionable. Did not like that. You also get all of their POVs in this book too. So full family affair. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> You will never catch me talking about this book again. Moving on. I read Dear Enemy by Kristen Callahan. It follows Mackin and Delilah. It is dual POV. And they have known each other since they were kids in middle school. So it's kind of a childhood friends. That word is debatable. Childhood enemies to their lovers. <laughs> it's also sister's boyfriend because Mackin um, in middle slash high school was dating Delilah's sister. And now it is many years later and he comes to her 
asking her for help because her sister stole something from him and he needs it back. And so Delilah enlists herself on helping him. And so she goes to work for him to pay off her sister's debt. And she becomes his personal chef. Mackin also happens to be a very famous actor. Did I mention that? So there's a little billionaire aspect to this. We love that. We love it when he's rich. You know what I mean? The only thing that matters is when they're rich. What else do you need from men besides money? I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, what was I saying? I even forgot. So, dear enemy, obviously, enemies to lovers, um, boss employee, billionaire romance, sister's ex-boyfriend, a little bit of forbidden as well. Oh my god, the lighting is changing again. Would you look at that? We love nature. Um, what was I saying? I forgot. Dear enemy. It was cute. What I rated? Four stars. I rated it four stars. It was cute. I was a little bit bored throughout this book, to be honest. I really liked a lot of parts, but some of it was boring to me. However, I am the kind of person that gets bored so easily. So to be honest, 90% of the books I read, even though I love them, they are scenes that I'm bored. Only like my top favorites when I rate it five stars is when I wasn't bored at all. It was fucking amazing. The book was just chef's kiss all the way. And I only have certain books that are that. Like for instance, this month, I only had one five star read. I'm very picky with the five stars because most books bore me. So I feel like you probably wouldn't be bored of this. It was just me. But yeah, it was very cute. Nonetheless, there was a little bit of spice. Mackin and Delilah were very adorable. And I loved the enemies to lovers and the banter. You know, that always hits. So it was cute. Four stars. Then I continued my Taylor Jenkins read binge and I read After I Do. I started reading some of Taylor Jenkins Reads books and then I just couldn't stop. So now I've pretty much gone through 95% of her entire backlist. This book reminded me a lot of All Your Perfects. If you like all your perfects you're probably going to really enjoy this book it follows lauren and ryan and they have been married for many many years they were together since college and now their marriage is going through a little bit of a rocky patch um is that how you say it? rocky patch rocky path the rocks <laughs> Their marriage is hitting a little bit of speed bumps. You know what I mean? We're struggling. And they decide that to fix their marriage, they're going to spend a year apart. A year where they do not talk, no communication whatsoever, and they can do whatever they want. And after that year, they're going to meet up again and see where both their minds are at. Who told Ryan and Lauren this was a good idea? Who knows? Not me. I didn't say that. But they, they felt like it was the only way to go. And we followed that journey with them, unfortunately, because it was fucking painful. <laughs> Taylor Jenkins Reid definitely always is really great at showing us different sides of things, putting us in different shoes and getting us to see things from a different point of view. And this book did a great job at doing that. So it was definitely all your perfect energy. If you like the marriage on the rocks, why am I saying marriage on the rocks as if it's a fucking martini? <laughs> marriage reconciliation trope? Like marriage in trouble trope? If you like, if you like a marriage that's not going well, and you want to see it do better after I do. If you're scared to read this book, you should be. But it does have a happy ending, so... <laughs> anyway, it was cute. I rated it a 4.25 stars. It wasn't my favorite by Taylor Jenkins Reid because that spot is reserved for Daisy Jones and the Six and for Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. What I didn't like about this book, it's things that I can't say without spoiling. So it was a 4.25. This next book may shock you because it is completely out of left field. I read No Exit by Taylor Adams. That's a thriller. I'm not going to tell you too much because thrillers, I feel like you should go as much blindly into it as you can obviously with thrillers though like always know that it's going to be a very dark subject so if you do need like trigger warning for thrillers i don't know if people do that with thrillers but search them up if you need it basically this book follows darby and darby is a college student who figures out her mom is not doing so well and she's in the hospital so she takes the drive during winter break to go see her mom and during the drive a blizzard um comes up in the air zeus was fucking shit up for darby and a blizzard comes and she stops at this rest area where there are four strangers and she sees all the cars outside and in one car there is a little girl stuck in a cage so now darby is trying to figure out which one of those strangers has that little girl and how she can rescue her but there's no wi-fi there's no signal she cannot call for help and she cannot drive away because there's a blizzard. So things are a little bit rough for Darby. I really liked this. I rated her 4.5 with thrillers since I've read so many. It's hard to catch me off guard. So with this book, there wasn't like an aha moment where I was like completely thrown off. But there were definitely some chilling scenes where, you know, you look at your little hairs and you're like, oh shit. What's it called when you get the bumps? Goosebumps. I'm not... English isn't my first language. <laughs> my excuse every time I fuck up a word, I'm like, English isn't my first language. It was Portuguese. Okay. And then Spanish and then English. So... <laughs>
in reality, I just forget shit a lot. There were definitely some goosebump scenes. I loved the mystery. I loved the story. It was so touching that at the end, I almost cried in a thriller. Like, I literally teared up. And I was like, oh my god. What was that, you know? Yeah, no exit, 4.5 stars. Then I finally did something I've been meaning to do for quite some time. And I started the Dirty Air series by Lauren Asher, y'all. I know, I know. Round of applause. Come on. I want to hear y'all shout and scream and shout and let it all out. Oh, we yo, we yo, we yo. You are now, now rocking with Will I Am and Britney, bitch. Da, da, da. So I read the Dirty Air series. Um, well, I read the first book in the Dirty Air series, and that is Throttle. The other three books will be read by me in March. So be on the lookout for that. That is not true because March is this month. In April, I meant. Remember that English is not my first language. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, yes. So F1 Racing season. Season. <laughs> F1 Racing. F1 Racing season. <laughs> F1 Racing season is back in action. And being the sports gal that I am, because I know so much about sports and I follow every single one and I know all the rules and stuff. Don't ask me any questions because like I don't, I don't like to talk about it, but I'm such a sports girly. I started the Dirty Air series to keep up with F1 racing, you know? So the first book is Throttled. That's the one I read. It follows Noah and Maya. You get dual POV. All of the books are dual POV, so I'm very excited. You know how we usually get brother's best friend? This one is a brother's rival. Not brother's best friend, but brother's rival and teammate. You have Noah. He is this hotshot racer um, for the Bandini group. Bandini group? Bandini team. Sure, we're gonna go with team. And Maya just finishes graduating college when her brother gets offered a spot in Bandini. So he joins Noah's team, but they are rivals. And he brings Maya along because Maya wants to be a vlogger. So she decides to travel with Bandini all around the world and vlog the experience. And that is when Maya and Noah meet. Um, but obviously it is very forbidden because it's a brother's rival. And Noah's a little bit of a player. and He doesn't want to settle down. I loved getting to know Bandini and seeing the other characters that we're gonna get in the other books. Um, um, and I loved Maya and Noah. They were very cute. I rated Throttle to four star. I wasn't very, very attached to Maya and Noah. I thought they were cute. They just weren't like, you know, engraved in my memory until the end of time. But I really, really liked it. And I think it's a great start to the Dirty Air series. However, I am the most excited for Wrecked and Redeemed. I said what I said. Leave your thoughts down below. Which book from the Dirty Air series do you think will be my favorite? Which guy from the Dirty Air series do you think will be my favorite? Which couple? Which girl? Let me know all your thoughts. Can't wait to see what you think. Because I obviously don't know since I just read this one. In this book you do meet Liam, Jax, and Santi and those are the other three guys that get books. And then you meet Sophie who is the girl for the second book. You don't meet the other girls yet. This Devil's Night and Fallen Men are definitely my most anticipated reads ever. So I'm really excited to have started this. Dirty Toronto, four stars. Honestly, I think I was on a little bit of an enemies to lovers kick this month because then I read The Enemy Trap by Marin Moore. So another enemies to lovers book. The Enemy Trap follows Hayes and Sophia and they have hated each other since high school, except one night they are trapped on a yacht together. Um... <laughs> what a sad life to live, trapped on a yacht. They have a one night stand. Out of that one night stand comes a whole ass baby, a child, that's right pregnancy trope. If you're not into the pregnancy trope, you probably wouldn't like this book. But Marin Moore is known to write. I almost hit my eye with that book. But Marin Moore's books are pretty much all pregnancy tropes from what I know. They're all like either single parent or pregnancy. They're all like 200 pages or less. So they're very quick reads, very fun. I rated this a three star. It was good. It just wasn't my, like it was, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't amazing either. It's characters that instantly when I closed the book, I forgot about them and kind of forgot about the plot. I was just like, that was fun. Okay, out of sight, out of mind. Forgot about it. Did I read it? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm very excited for the next book, The Newspaper Nanny. That's the one that I read this one for, even though they are standalone. So I didn't even have to read this one to read the next one. I just kind of wanted to go in the order. So I'm excited to read Mary Moore's other books. Three stars. It was cute. It was fun. It was quick. That's what she said. Now we have the last paperback I read this month. The other books I'm going to talk about were all audiobooks and Kindle books. So the last physical book I read this month was The Confidence of Wildflowers by Macalia Smeltzer, I want to say. Macalia Smeltzer, I think is how you say her name. So sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. So this is book one and a duet. The second book is coming out April 6th, I want to say. It's the beginning of April, one of those days. So it follows Salem and Thay Thayer. I don't know how to say his name. T-H-A-Y-E-R. <laughs> 
Thayer. Anyway, it follows Salem and Thayer and it is dual POV. So Salem is 18 and Thayer is 30. So you do get age gap in this book. So basically she lives with her mom and her sister and a new guy moves in next door and that is Thayer. He is a single dad and they start getting to know each other and forming a little friendship there. Shoddy base. So I literally was so traumatized by this book that I completely forgot to tell you my opinions about it. I literally just told you what it's about and then I moved on. I didn't even explain it. So here I am now that it's been a week that I read it. Okay, beepster. Hello. Anyway, now that it's been a week that I read it, I can tell you that I do not recommend at all. Um, if you're going to read it, please search up trigger warnings, but it just was not for me. Um, the first 90% of the book was cute. Nothing like crazy, but it was cute. There were some things that I still didn't like whatsoever, but I was enjoying nonetheless. The last 10% of the book was one of the worst things I've ever seen in my entire life. Something that no trigger warning can really prepare you for. I don't know how to explain it without giving you any spoilers, but it just was not my cup of tea. It brought it all the way down to a three star for me. I just usually don't give like two stars unless I was you know, having a horrible, horrible time reading the book and one stars are usually my DNF. I just have no words for what happened at the last 10% of this book. It was not a cute romance. It was not just a fluffy read. It was very heavy. Search of trigger warnings. Don't let people tell you this is a cute romance book. It is for sure the first 90%, but the last little bit, <laughs> they got me all sorts of fucked up. No, I might still read the second one just to see what happens, but yeah, three stars. I would I would not recommend. No, no, no. So those were all the physical books I read. So now let's talk about the book that I read on my Kindle and then the audiobooks. I only read one book on my Kindle this month, pretty much. Well, the other ones, like even though I have them in paperback, some of them I still read on my Kindle. I do that often. I know. Don't ask me why I do it, but I just, it's, I do it. It's a concept that's it's not clear to many, but it is a concept that I stand behind. Anyway, so Kindle, first of all, look at my Kindle. Appreciate the Kindle. So I read Taste by Melanie Harlow. That is the book after Ignite. Now listen, this is a whole series, right? Ignite and Taste are part of a much bigger series that I did not read. I went straight into Ignite um, because they are all standalones. They're just part of a series. I think it's called the Cover, the Cover Land, the Cover Farm, the Cover Clover Farm series something like that anyway ignite is one of the books in that series and right after ignite it's taste so i read ignite last month i think and i loved 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 that book and in that one you meet um gianni and ellie and that is the couple you get in taste basically they are childhood enemies to lovers their families are best friends but they do not get along at all and basically they now both work together because ellie is in charge of the wine he's in charge of the food because he's a chef and she deals with the wine and ellie is up for this opportunity she has to drive down to have an interview except a blizzard is coming and gianni's like you should not drive alone and she's like but i want to and he's like i'm gonna drive with you and they get stuck there so um you do get a one bed trope you do get forced proximity you get enemies to lovers um you get and it's always been you you get all those vibes with this book i did not really like it though let me explain i loved ignite I loved Ignite so much and I really expected so much out of taste and I think that's where I went wrong because in Ignite you meet Ellie and Gianni like I said and I loved their banter and their enemies to lovers in that book and I was just expecting so much out of them but then this one really let me down. I didn't see the banter and the enemies that I needed to see. You know, it was very loving and cute. It was a very cute book, a lot of sweet moments. There's also a pregnancy trope in this book too. This is not a secret, it was very promoted. I like single parent way more than pregnancy trope. That's usually what I go for is single parent, but pregnancy trope doesn't bother me if it's done well, you know? I just did not like it in this book because they spent so much time in the blizzard area of the book that when the book got really good, it was over. And they lost the banter. I didn't get the enemies, like I said. Kind of let me down, but I feel like it's because I expected so much. So so maybe if you go into it not expecting as much as I did, you will like it. Yeah, I rated it a 3.75. There was not much to it. It was just, it was cute. It was quick. So the last three books I have for this month were all audiobooks. Um, I have Audible and I love Audible with my entire heart. I love listening to books. First up was The Mixtape by Brittany C. Cherry. This book was a roller coaster of emotions, okay? I don't even really know how to describe it except pain. Be ready for pain. Search up trigger warnings. This book was a lot but I loved it. The mixtape follows Emery and Oliver and you get a dual POV from them. Oliver is going through a lot because his twin brother passed away six months ago and so he's dealing with the fallout of that and he was part of a duo with his brother. They were both singers and now he's also dealing with the fact of what he's going to do with his career. One night he is drowning his sorrows at a bar and he gets into some trouble and the girly that helps him out is the worker there that happens to be Emery and Emery is a single mom, a badass bitch who goes through so much, is so 
loyal is so incredible. She's everything and more, okay? And she is going through some money troubles because she gets fired after that night with Oliver. And he decides he's going to help her. So he hires her to be his chef. And that's basically what you follow in the mixtape. It is a very emotional. It deals with a lot of trauma, a lot of grief, mental health. Definitely search up trigger warnings if you're going to read this one. But it was so, so good. I loved, loved, loved it. I rated it 4.75. The only reason why it wasn't a 5 for me was because I would have liked to dive more into the romance, more into Oliver and Emery as a couple, because I felt like we got so much of them as people and I got to know these characters so well I just really wanted to get to know them more together but it was still so so amazing and it was such a good audiobook too like I loved listening to it the voices were done really really well like I said very emotional it also has POC representation we love to see it single mom billionaire romance rock star kind of romance as well honestly really fucking cute really emotional I loved the quotes in this book yeah very great listen the mixtape then I listened to the most valuable playboy by Lauren Blakely this one is one POV from the guy's point of view which is really interesting because usually if you get one pov it's just the girl but this one is the guy the garbage truck is passing by okay here to pick me up <laughs> he is a quarterback he is a football player he is in this auction that they have every single year where like the football players get auctioned for like one night with someone the highest bidder it's for charity it's this cute event and he is in a little bit of a dilemma because there is um a girl that has been pushing to get with him and he does not want to and that girl is like family with the owner of the team so he also doesn't want to piss off the owner because he's waiting for his contract to be renewed and while he's on stage he's freaking out because this girl's bidding on him but then his childhood friend who happens to be his best friend's sister bids on him instead to save the day i know her name is violet but i'm not gonna lie to you i forgot his name anyway so she bids on him <laughs> Everybody thinks that they're dating, so they go with this ruse just to get this girl off his back and to make sure his contract is signed. I did not like it, though. I was very, very bored. Childhood Friends to Lovers is one of my favorite tropes, but it has to be done right, and I'm very picky with them, so this one was just not for me. I am more picky than most, though, with it. I know some people read this book and loved it, so you could love this one. You could not like it at all. It's just completely up to you. It was a two for me. It was very just there. I don't remember even the guy's name but some people love it so maybe you will too lastly i listened to stuck with you by ali hazelwood and this is a very cute fluffy novella this is a little series by ali hazelwood the first one is under one roof and now the second one is stuck with you the third one is coming out soon and it's three best friends and they're all in stem and they each get a book so i listened to under one roof last month so now this month i listened to stuck with you catch me next month listening to the third one if it's out by then i'm not sure if it will be i don't remember the date comes out <laughs> i'm a mess today holy shit <laughs> Anyway, the first book was Mara, the second one is Sadie, and the third one is Hannah. And Sadie's is basically she meets this boy, Eric, and they have a great time. They um, click right away. It's a little bit of an insta-love with them, but you know, you can expect that from novellas because it's so quick. So don't go into a novella not expecting that, you know what I mean? Anyway, so they meet, they click, and then something goes terribly wrong, and she hates Eric afterwards and doesn't speak to him until they get stuck in an elevator together and are forced to hatch it all out. I really, really liked this. It was very cute. There was some spice to it. Much like Mara's story, I liked Mara's, I think, more. Like, Under One Roof, I liked more than Stuck With You, but I still enjoyed both. It was a quick, fun, and cute novella, so if you are in the mood for that, you would probably really like Stuck With You. And I rated it four stars. That's it, Shoddy Bays. Those are all the books I read in March. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see what I read in April. Also, I say this in every single one of my wrap-ups, but I feel like I have to reiterate and that is do not compare yourself to other people's reading goals okay if i'm reading 20 books you do not have to read 20 books you could read three you could read one you could read 50 you could read however many you want we all have different times that we can read we all have different priorities so you do not need to read 30 books to be a reader you could read one or you could read none this month or you could listen to books or you could read it on your kindle whatever you also don't have to own every single book that you read either you could borrow them from the library or you could get kindle unlimited and have a kindle or you could have the paperbacks or you could listen you know there are many different ways that you can read and all the ways make you a reader nobody is better or superior than anyone else you know so just remember that try to not compare your goals to anybody else's it's kind of like comparing your life to anybody else's none of us are in the same stage we're just kind of all floating thank you so much for watching shadow bays i hope you guys had a great day i hope you enjoyed this video i love you so so much